This is the story of Final Fantasy XIV, Patch 2.5, Before the Fall, Part 1. Now where we left off at the end of 2.4, a hero had just rooted out a Garlean spy within the Immortal Flames, and a Charlian visitor named Moonbrita was studying White Orosite. Let's get started. At the Rising Stones, a crystal brave named Riol says that we may have an opportunity to capture the Black Marketeer who was responsible for funneling weapons into Uldah before the riot. Alfino is needed in Uldah, but the hero follows the braves to a tunnel near Highbridge. As the hero arrives in the tunnel, Ilbert is disappointed. They've caught a man carrying boxes of weapons, but he pulled a knife on them and an inexperienced brave fought and killed him. They are unable to question him, but at least they have the weapons. The hero takes the weapons to the Crystal Braves in Uldah. They thank him, and then Riol asks to speak to the hero separately. Privately, Riol says something isn't quite right. He's certain that the weapon shipment was much larger than what they brought back. Not sure what to make of it, he leaves. Then the hero is called back to the Rising Stones. We have a guest from Ishgard who wishes to speak with you. The Lord Commander sent me hither to request your aid in a matter of grave import. The Observatorium's astrologians have sounded the alarm. The astrologians believed that it was Midgard Soma himself who cried out on this occasion. After an absence of centuries, the King of Kings did return to lead his kind against the might of Garlemald, only to fall in his duel with the Agrius, proud flagship of the Garlean fleet. Devoid of life, his corpse remaineth entwined about the Magitek monstrosity even unto this day. Since the Great Worm has shown no sign of life. Only by directly examining the Keeper of the Lake can we be certain. Do you accept? We knew you would not disappoint us. When a great worm roars, his brethren cannot choose but answer. We prepare for battle. Vinfilia explains to the hero that what is called the Keeper of the Lake is actually the site of the wreckage of the Agrius and the corpse of Midgard Sormir. The Agrius was the greatest imperial vessel, and the dragon destroyed it 15 years ago. This was during a battle where Gaius von Baelsar tried to capture Mordona, the land where Revenant's toll is, but Midgard Sormir's intervention stopped him. As the dragon took the vessel down, the explosion killed him. Vinfilius suggests the hero travel to the site and speak with the Doman ally watchman assigned there. The Doman Watchman says he's seen Garlean ships flying back and forth, and that if the Ishgardians really think that Midgard Sormir could be resurrected, the hero should go check it out. The hero begins to climb the wreckage known as the Keeper of the Lake. As he approaches the top, he gazes upon the face of Midgard Sormir. Who treadeth now upon my bones? The hero survives the Dragon King's attacks and manages to impress him. By her gifts hast thou earned a moment's reprieve. Speak, mortal, and I shall listen. My people have heard the song. Ishgard shall burn. We do not forgive. Thy reprieve is at an end. Fear not, mortal. I shall not harm And an end. 
The hero returns to the Rising Stones and speaks with fellow Scions. They are amazed that Midgard Sormir was never dead, he's simply been lying dormant for 15 years. Alfino is concerned about him saying Ishgard shall burn. He says Sir Aymeric must know right away, but he will have to take caution because others have been executed for heresy for claiming to have heard dragons' voices. As Alfino leaves to update Lucia, the hero tells Minfilia that the dragon stripped him of the Blessing of Light. She is shocked, but explains that Midgard Sormir is as old as the star, and she's happy that the hero is unharmed. As Minfilia leaves, a miniature Midgard Sormir appears, asks the hero if he's a pawn, then vanishes. You confronted the Worm Lord and lived to tell the tale. The Dravanians are coming. Ishgard has weathered countless assaults over centuries. This will be no different. But I expect the Lord Commander would sing your praises. I must away, but we shall meet again soon. And this will be no different? Why am I not convinced? After Lucia is gone, Alfino says Moonbrida has news. The Scions gather to hear what she has to say. I believe we're on the verge of a breakthrough. Let's start by reviewing what we already know. So, an Arsian is an immortal because its soul doesn't return to the ethereal realm when its host is defeated. Instead, it flees to the place that lies between our world and the Void. And that White Aurasite has adequate capacity to entrap the beings, albeit only briefly. To unmake an Arsian soul, one must need smite it with a concentrated burst, or blade, of purest ether. We don't know what etheric density our blade needs to have in order for it to work. And the only viable source is the land. Why would we need to tap the river when there are veritable reservoirs jutting out all over the land? There is no guarantee that they will be in close proximity at a crucial moment. What if we could tap their power from afar? Uh, I've already built an etheric siphon especially for this purpose, and I've been meaning to try it out. May I suggest Northern Thanalan? There you will find corrupted crystals of middling size, and if you do elect to visit the place, I should be much obliged if you would assist me in another matter while you are in the area. Movement has been observed at Castrum Meridianum, and to this end they have their sights set upon the Ceruleum Processing Plant. I would request the Scion's aid in the defensive effort. I won't lie, the crystals you speak of sound perfect, so the Garleans have to go. Pray, join the Crystal Braves and lend them your support. Thangrid and Papa Limo shall accompany you. Go well, and be safe. After the meeting, Alfino asks the hero to help the Braves in Northern Thanalan, while Hori Boulder says he's escorting Flamen as she tries to recruit some powerful allies. The hero arrives at the Cerulean Processing Plant and speaks to the Brave named Edelstein. They say that multiple companies of Garlean troops have been spotted in the area. The hero joins the Braves as they hunt them down and defeat them. <laughs> Returning to Edelstein, he is very thankful, then says Moonbrida is lingering in the area and he thinks something is wrong. The hero goes to her. Hold on, I won't be a second. Aye, that ought to do it. So far, so good. The siphon works, I'm happy to say. Which just leaves the small matter of forging our blade. He senses me. I see you are an Archon of Charlian, meddler. But I don't much like your tone. Let me direct my words to one who understands them. We meet at last, warrior of light. I am Nabrialis. But what's this? I do not sense the blessing of light. Now is the time to claim the staff and take my place at Lord Zodiac's right hand. Oh, gods. He means Tupsimati. Master Louis Soir's staff. Minfilia's in danger. We have to get back to the Rising Stones. The hero immediately goes to the Rising Stones. You too. What now, Warrior of Light? Ah, but that name is no longer fitting. What do you mean? 
The blessing of light kept you and your fellow meddlers safe. It was that which prevented my kind from entering your domain. Though it had no power over the likes of Elidibus and La Habrea. Being of this world, they could come and go as they please. I shall take that staff and bring about the next rejoining. Rejoining? Then it was your doing. The Isle of Val, the scholars, all of it. is but a broken relic. What possible use could you have for it? You mean to say that all this time you kept the key, never knowing what it was you possessed? Together with the horn, it can be used to draw vast quantities of ether from its bearer's surroundings. How else do you think Louis Soir was able to invoke the power of the Twelve without making them an offering of crystals? I will die before I let you take it. I would happily end your miserable life here and now. Alas, Elidibus would never let me hear the end of it. Very well. I will take you too. After them! Quickly! Before the rift closes! The hero enters the rift, henceforth known as the Crystallis, to save Minfilia. The hero defeats Nabriolis and Minfilia is set free. You're safe. Thank the Twelve. I may return whensoever I wish. Again and again and again. There will be no next time. This is the end. What trickery is this? Use Tupsamati to gather ether. Quickly, before he breaks free. Call to mind the time you struck down La Habrea with the Blade of Light. So much ether. And it still isn't enough. Mother Heidelin, hearken to our plea. Lend us your divine light. Do our words no longer reach you? If only we had a bit more ether. Moonbreeder, what are you doing? In death. There is life. Farewell, Uriange. You daft old coat. I am immortal! Moonbreeder. She's gone. You did it, my friend. The Asian is dead. This device is a legacy of Moonbreeder's toils and sacrifice. Minfilia, uh, are you all right? What happened here? Where is Moonbreeder? I have no words. Does Arianje know? There is something I must tell you. I heard all, my lady. Moonbreeder hath fulfilled her destiny, hath she not? Long ago, far across the seas in the Charlean motherland, Moonbreeder and I did study under the sage tutelage of Master Louis Soir. Through his noble sacrifice was the realm spared its doom. Yet this great soul, whom all should rightly have honored, was branded a pariah in his own land. The slanders that were heaped upon him after his passing served only to inflame the turmoil within her. She may now find the peace which hath for so long eluded her. How I shall miss thee. Her sacrifice must not be in vain. 
Let us continue her work on the Blade of Aether and see it to completion. My lady, I would mourn Moonbreeder in mine own way. Take all the time you require. Minfilia fears for Urian Jay and how he must be grieving. She says they will hold a ceremony for Moonbreeder. Forgive me, Moonbreeder. Had I been quicker or wiser, but I was not, and you paid the price. But you would not suffer us to wallow in our sorrow, would you? We shall defend this realm and her people to the last. Life for death, a fair exchange. Other bargains will be struck. Back at the Rising Stones, Menphilia grieves the loss of Moonbreeda and speaks of maintaining her resolve for the challenges ahead. And patch 2.5 ends there. If you want to see what happens next, check out my next video on patch 2.55. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs>